Hey, what's up everybody? This is Katakus, and today I wanted to do probably a quick video. I don't know. It's just a thought that came to me when I was watching um, a review on uh, synthesizers. Um, I remember somebody making a video some time ago discussing why uh, people who review synthesizers can't totally be trusted because no matter how, like whether they buy their own synthesizers or like they, they pay, uh, get a discount from the uh, people who make the synthesizers, like the producers uh, of the synthesizers, or whether it's sent to them and they can say, oh, uh, this is only my own opinion and my opinion won't be uh, influenced by them because you are the people who pay uh, for for these videos by views or something, you know, like, um, people claim that uh, they uh, will be completely unbiased and um, basically implying that they're going to tell you if it's bad as well. Um, and the, the video that I watched discussed how this obviously can't be true because in essence, if they, for example, ripped on a synthesizer um, or any piece of music here, um, uh, that would mean that in future that company would stop sending um, devices for that person to review. So, in effect, even though the intentions of the reviewer might be um, honest, uh, they're still just by nature going to be under the pressure of not disappointing um, who, whoever they're like, whoever, whichever company they're reviewing the synthesizer of. This was actually the video I watched was a video video from a uh, uh, or about cell phones actually, and it was talking about how um, these reviews can't be completely honest because if they are, then uh, they will lose the ability to get review copies. Um, and there's the pressure of like it, it's different for depending on the different industries that are like the reviews are being made for, especially like cell phones. Some of these reviewers get them a month or two months before they're even released, and they got and they they get NDAs and whatever. And if they want to have their review out first, then they're under pressure uh, to um, get the device as a review copy early, which means they're under pressure to not be too harsh on the company that they're reviewing. Synthesizers are a little different. I don't think, generally speaking, that synthesizer companies send out early review um, devices to, to most reviewers. Maybe some like Andrew Huang with millions of views or viewers, but for the most part, some of the best um, music, or not music, some of the best uh, gear reviewers, they only have like a couple hundred thousand. A um, couple that come to mind are like Lou Pop or Ricky Tinez or um, who else? Like True Cuckoo or uh, Simon the Magpie. You know, these, these people don't have millions of viewers, but um, I would say, like judging by their view count, that even though they don't have massive amounts of subscribers, they definitely have a pretty healthy um, fan base who is interested in buying that synthesizer. So um, I think that their words are meaningful uh, or impactful on whether a device will be um, widely adapted or adopted or whatnot. Um, blah, 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 you know, I'm just talking. Uh, but I wanted to make a video that kind of pushes back against the idea that the reviewers have to be more positive than negative because of this pressure. And my thought is, it's just something that came to me, is that um, even though uh, you probably won't have a reviewer um, say a bunch of bad things about a synthesizer or point out a bunch of faults for a synthesizer uh, or a guitar or a pedal or whatever, um, I think that it's still quite... Uh, honest how positive they're being about the device uh, for example every review I've ever done um, this is where my pressure to be positive is maybe subconscious every review I've done is a piece of gear that I bought myself with my own money it's something that I wanted before I bought it I really wanted it so one might think oh yeah of course I'm not going to bag on it because I own it now I already spent the money on it but another thing that is worth arguing is that someone like me, for, for instance, who already owns uh, the things that I'm buying or, like, or the things that I'm reviewing, um, someone like me has probably already spent a lot of time watching other reviews and watching other videos and getting this like 
true, deep interest in buying and using that synthesizer or that device, or that, uh, that uh, audio equipment. We've probably spent a lot of time already hearing about its faults and um, already hearing about the things that it doesn't have and blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> but, uh, or, or so, not but, so that means by the time we get the synthesizer, I mean, we haven't bought something that, like, turns out to light on fire just randomly or, or um, forgets all of its patches or, or bricks itself. Like, we're probably not going to buy something that has a bunch of negative stigma around it. Um, <clears throat> at least I'm not. We're going to buy something that we really want because so many people have used it or so many of the people we trust, so many of those reviewers that I mentioned before that we trust, uh, have gone through the, the good about it, what's awesome about it, and the thing that's awesome about it is what interests us. <clears throat> and that leads me to my last point about why these reviews, even if they're review devices that are sent for free to the people to review, uh, the reason they're trustable um, is because it's it's different than like getting something that might be a, sh a toss up between good and bad. It's more so like if you're if you're getting a synthesizer, you pretty much know that it's going to synthesize sounds. You know, like you know that's what it's going to do. And every different one, whether it be a cheap one from Behringer or uh, Uno, or whether it be an expensive one from uh, Sequential or Moog or, you know, any of these, these big expensive names, either or, whatever it is, it's going to have its own personality. It's going to be a synthesizer that does its own thing. Or it does something that other synthesizers have done before, but it does it for cheaper. Um, but the point is, uh, you, you kind of know what you're going to get, and I think the true question with uh, like between different synthesizers is what thing different are these devices going to do? But back to my point about why uh, these reviews are still uh, like valid, even with that pressure to be positive about them, is because generally speaking, when you get one of these things and you're playing with it, you don't have a lot of negative feelings about it. You're not like, oh, I hate this thing. It always does this and the knobs fall off. And, you know, like... Generally speaking, in my experience at least, when you get a synthesizer, uh, or uh, I don't buy electric guitars, but I would assume electric guitars, or uh, any of these music devices that we love, pedals and stuff, uh, generally speaking, you get what you pay for, and it is a really enjoyable experience to use these things. There might be some issues with like too much menu diving or whatever, and that can be definitely a flaw with a synthesizer, but it's never something that you're like, you shouldn't buy this synthesizer because there's too much menu diving. I don't think anybody's ever felt that way about any synthesizer. I could be wrong. Somebody in the comments might say, actually, the blah 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 synthesizer is terrible because of this. Um, but, but you know, for example, the uh, DX7, the Yamaha DX7, a famous synthesizer from the 80s that, like, is lustworthy now that people, like, think about because they want to buy it. And they want to buy it because of the sound and because of the status of owning a DX7. I mean, let's, let's face it. Being able to, like, being proud of your synthesizer, is, there's nothing wrong with that. It's part of it. But... Uh, the point is, that is a synthesizer that has a lot of menu diving. From what I've heard, it's really hard to use. However, if you get a DX7, you're probably going to love it because you're going to get what you expect. You expect to get a synthesizer that, out of the box, makes some of the most iconic sounds that we've heard in 80s music ever. And at the very least, you're going to get that. And if you learn how to use it and dig into it, you're going to get more. So the person who's reviewing it is reviewing their experience with it. Their experience with it. And when you get a new music device, your experience is going to be, oh my god, this thing is awesome. Like, that's generally how it goes. Unless you make a huge mistake and, like, you see a picture of a synthesizer and you're like, I want that one. And then you get it and you have no idea how to use it, no idea how it sounds, and you find out it's only a MIDI controller. Then, okay, maybe your review might be uh, super negative, but it might also be super uninformative because it's way off topic. Um, so, yeah, the, the main point is... Uh, when you see these reviews, not just mine, but any of these reviews of these devices, if you ever hear the argument that uh, you can't really trust these reviews because they, they have to be kind of positive in order to keep getting review units and whatnot, it doesn't really matter. That's not a factor. 
because anybody who reviews any of these devices is telling you what they feel like using it, which is applicable to how you might feel using it. Because after you've watched 30 or 40 videos on this synthesizer or this guitar or this pedal that you really want to own, after you've seen all that documentation and all those videos and all those ads and all those store pages where you might be able to buy it and all those testimonials about how awesome it is, once you've seen all these things, you kind of had a, have a good idea about what the user experience is like. But what's truly going to make it a great synth or not is how you're going to feel using it. And when you watch these reviews, that's what you get. You get the feeling of what would it be like if I owned this. It helps you to imagine what you would feel like owning one of these things, using one of these things. And in that case, reviews like these, from all these people who make these reviews, even with all that pressure to say good things, are still completely useful and completely applicable to I bet. Applicable to you. <laughs> Because they at least uh, give you the chance to imagine what it'd be like. Anyway, that's my thought for the day. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next one. This is Kedicus, out.